Hello. Recently, I posted a video on how to buy Bitcoin. And that's cool. It's really easy. But sometimes it helps to understand a little bit more. You don't have to understand all the details to buy it or to use it. Sort of like normal dollars, right? You don't have to understand how they're made or why, why they have value. You don't have to worry about that to go buy a hamburger. But having that deeper understanding is probably helpful if you want to get serious about Bitcoin or investing or whatever it might be. So this video, we're going to be talking about how Bitcoin works. So by the end of this video, my goal is to help you understand Bitcoin. I want you to be able to have a casual conversation to pick up the ladies, of course, you know. So this is for beginners. We're not going to get super advanced, but I do want you to have a good understanding of the why behind Bitcoin. What value does it offer? And that'll help you learn the more advanced stuff in upcoming videos. All right, so the very first thing, let's go with a simple example of like a contract, right? So when you want something from somebody, you can you can shake hands <laughs> and you know, this is what like the, the classic promise is built upon. And some people didn't really like that because you had to trust the other person to fulfill the other end of the deal. Introduce the contract and it kind of throws the handshake out the window. Now you have to sign and you're, you're legally required to, to fulfill your end of the contract or there are consequences or whatever it might be. So basically, we removed the aspect of trust with this contract. So now this guy doesn't have to trust this guy because the rules are written down on paper. And in a way, and this is weird, so just listen here for a second. We got rid of this trust, which allows each one of these people to trust that the other person is going to meet their requirements of the contract because it's written on paper it's it's law they have to agree and they have to abide so yeah you guys get it the point is we need to remove trust from the financial transactions and where does trust come in well it comes with third-party financial institutions such as banks or any other company that handles money in between a transaction. So when when I give you money, I can give it to you in cash, but when it comes to digitally giving you money, that has to go through somebody, right? It can, it can go through Apple Pay, so Apple becomes that third party. It can go through Venmo. In that situation, PayPal is the third party. The transaction can go through credit card processors, and in that situation, the, the company is that third party and that's where those fees come in. Or we can do, you know, a wire transfer. And in that situation, the bank is that third party. In all situations of transferring money between people digitally, there is a third party that we have to go through. The intermediary between one person and another person trying to trade money. And psh, you know corporations, we don't wanna trust those scumbags. We want to exchange money directly. And that is the value proposition of Bitcoin. All right, so at this point, we understand the goal, which is to remove trust from these third parties, and we understand why, is because we don't want to have to rely on them. So Bitcoin is proposed as a system for irreversible transactions from one person to another. Yeah, <clears throat> pay attention there. I said irreversible. What that means is if you accidentally send me money instead of, sending someone else money. <laughs> you can't just go to the bank and be like, yo, I got scammed, help me, please. So you also have to realize that these third parties, these corporations, these banks, they are offering a service to you as a consumer. And when we switch to Bitcoin, that service is now your responsibility. So there is a trade-off and that's something people tend to forget about. So not everything is greener on the other side. But there is a lot of stuff that is greener and that's what we're gonna be talking about. So another way to think about it is, if we got rid of banks, you no longer have to trust banks with your money. But you no longer get to trust banks with your money. Now you have to do it. People aren't used to having so much financial responsibility. So as a result, people are gonna get scammed, they're gonna lose their Bitcoin, and ultimately there's going to have to be a lot of education and users of Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies are going to have to be very vigilant. So just to get some terminology here on the table, right here, I said that I can transfer money to you directly. That means no third party. 
I'm not gonna be using Venmo, I'm gonna send it directly to you. And you'll understand that a little bit more here soon, but this whole concept is known as peer-to-peer. -peer. I'm a peer, you're a peer, and I'm transferring it from peer-to-peer. -peer. And in order for transactions to be peer-to-peer, -peer, it has to be built on a decentralized system. So another word for like those third parties like banks and corporations is a centralized entity. And if we get rid of the centralized entity, it's said to be decentralized. So instead of that responsibility being on the bank, that responsibility is decentralized to all of the different nodes in the Bitcoin network, also known as the blockchain nodes. And that's what we're gonna get into a little bit now, but we're gonna get a little bit technical here, but we'll get through it. Bitcoin works because of something known as the blockchain. If you're brand new to blockchain, it's essentially a distributed database that allows for peer-to-peer -peer transactions. And when I send you money, that transaction is added into the blockchain, into what's known as a block. And these blocks contain some number of transactions, like let's say 2,000, and these blocks are linked together in a linked list-like data structure known as the blockchain. So literally we have blocks that are chained together in code. So comparatively, let's first think about how a traditional transaction would work. Let's use the example of Venmo. If you've never used Venmo, it's fine. It works just like Apple Pay or PayPal or whatever. Basically, I can transfer money to you through this app. And when I do that, that transaction is sent to the Venmo servers and it's processed on the Venmo servers. And then in the Venmo servers, 100 bucks is subtracted from my account and 100 bucks is added to your account and the transaction is complete. So that is how a centralized transaction works. A decentralized transaction is a little bit different because when I send you money through Bitcoin, instead of it going to the Bitcoin server, because it doesn't exist, it goes to various nodes in this distributed system. So it's kind of like instead of having that transaction power in one central entity, it's split up among all these different nodes and they all have that power. Now, if this transaction of me donating you $100 is announced to the whole world and all of these nodes hear about it, what's gonna happen? Is each node going to transfer a hundred bucks to you? Am I gonna end up paying you like hundreds of thousands of dollars because every single node does that transaction? Or how does that work? There needs to be some way for there to be a consensus. All of these nodes need to agree on what's gonna happen. <laughs> and that magic is done through a process known as Bitcoin mining. And the whole process of Bitcoin mining, I am going to do a dedicated video on, so slap that subscribe button. But basically all of these nodes are going to compete to decide which node gets to do that transaction. So when you hear about someone making fat stacks with Bitcoin mining, essentially they are trading their, com their computational power in exchange for Bitcoin. And that computational power is what's going to do that transaction and eventually that transaction will be confirmed and it becomes an official record on the blockchain, which you can explore using all these different online tools to see the different transactions. It's all public. So what I want you to get from this video is not how that process of consensus works, how these nodes process that transaction, because that's what we're gonna focus on in a separate video, because that can get a little bit more technical, that can be a little bit detailed. What I want you to get from this video is that there's not one central location processing that transaction. And instead it could be any one of these nodes that are part of this Bitcoin network. But to wrap up all that stuff we're gonna talk about later, this Bitcoin mining process is basically a competition between all these different nodes or computers on this network. And they're going to guess inputs to a function to get a particular result. And the first node to get that gets to commit that transaction to the blockchain. So I send you hundred bucks, that transaction is broadcasted to all of these different nodes. Let's say we have one over here and one over here. These two are competing to, to guess this number and let's say this one wins. So what this one did is it took your transaction, added it to a block, and since it won the Bitcoin mining competition, <laughs> it announces that block to the rest of the network. And if you're thinking, wow, this is extremely complicated, you're kind of right. But it is working. It's been in existence like 10 years or something like that. And there's been various hacks or 
thefts or issues that have happened. But overall, the system has sustained itself and all of these issues are being addressed. So I think there is a serious, serious potential future for Bitcoin as well as other cryptocurrencies and the blockchain technology behind all of this cryptocurrency. So for other things that you need to understand, you need to understand how these blocks are chained together, how we avoid hackers, where does encryption come into this because it's cryptocurrency and like a million other things. This is just scratching the surface of the surface of the basics. Unfortunately, there is a lot to know. And honestly, the more I study this stuff, the less I, I know, <laughs> which is kind of terrifying, honestly. All right, so I'm getting off track here. I gave you $100, and this is known as a transaction. And that transaction is added to one of the blocks on the blockchain. It's publicly visible and it's irreversible, meaning I can't get that money back from you unless you initiate a new transaction sending it back to me. And in that situation, it's not really a reversal. It's just like me giving you a $100 bill and then you giving me a $100 bill back. And because this is irreversible, we are allowing for the removal of trust at another level. So let's say I am a vendor, I'm selling something and you come into my shop, right? And you're sketchy and I just don't like you. Like I look at your face and I'm just like, no, I don't trust this guy and you're buying a high ticket item with your credit card, what's to say you're not going to then call the bank and be like, yo, I got scammed, can we reverse this transaction or do something to try to reverse that transaction after you bought the item and took it home? And as a seller, when I have to worry about the potential of a reversed transaction, I then have to get extra information about you. You know, I might wanna know your phone number or where you live or, or something like that, such that if there's any issues with the payment, I can get a hold of you and tell you to, to give me my money. So the current system as is, assuming people can reverse transactions, is, is a system of trust. I'm trusting the people coming into my store. With Bitcoin, we remove that aspect of trust because if you don't have the, the funds, none of the nodes on the network are going to confirm that transaction. You're not even gonna be able to process that. And let's say you do have the money, you send it to me, it's permanent. Once it is confirmed at a deep enough level, there's no way for you to get your money back. Assuming normal operations, no hacking and so forth, that is how it is supposed to work. And now that I don't have to worry about you coming in to my shop being all sketchy and whatnot, I am able to now trust you because I don't have to worry about any of those issues. So we got rid of trust and we exchanged it for a different kind of trust. <laughs> so we got rid of the trust in the person and now we trust the, the system of transacting. The blockchain, Bitcoin. All right, so I think that's enough. I'm kind of rambling here. So in conclusion, we get rid of third parties, we transfer peer to peer and we remove trust because the transactions are irreversible and we don't have to rely on any financial institutions or companies. The system exists thanks to all of the nodes that contribute to the Bitcoin mining process. And the reason they're willing to do that is because they get rewarded Bitcoin, which is extremely valuable. And all of these nodes in the network allow for transactions to be confirmed, which is what sustains the entire system. Now, just as a couple of other side notes, the underlying technology of Bitcoin blockchain there is only one blockchain for Bitcoin. Other cryptocurrencies have their own blockchain. So when someone talks about the Ethereum blockchain or a different cryptocurrency blockchain, that is a different blockchain. The magic behind the blockchain is something I'm going to interweave throughout numerous videos in this channel. So stay tuned for that and uh, yeah. There are various other things that make Bitcoin a valid cryptocurrency and that's stuff I'm gonna be talking about in a course I'm working on as well as upcoming videos. So stay tuned for that. I think it'll be really exciting. And also let me know if you have any questions. What concerns do you have for Bitcoin? Or if you're feeling creative, you could leave a comment with someone's WhatsApp number saying how they helped you make millions on Bitcoin trading. That would be really unique. So make sure you do that. <laughs> And please guys, just be very careful with Bitcoin. There's so many different ways to get scammed and nobody really understands the technology enough for it to be adopted for everyday use. But I think we're getting there. 
Right now, not too many vendors accept Bitcoin, but we're working that way and various payment processors are beginning to adopt that, which is going to increase the, the availability significantly. Thank you guys and stay tuned for the next video. Peace out.